As I mentioned at the end of the video on the sign law, there are two situations where the sign law will not work for you. Uh, if you're given three sides of a triangle or the angle between two sides. In either case, you don't have enough information to get started with the sign law and that's where you're going to need what we call the cosine law. Now the cosine law to me is sort of an extension of the Pythagorean theorem. You see the a squared equals b squared plus c squared is the Pythagorean theorem and if there was a right angle across from the little a that would be all you'd need. So this two times these two sides times the cos of the angle opposite a is kind of an adjustment factor on the end to take care of cases where the capital A is not a right angle. Now the simplest of the two cases that you're going to encounter here is the situation where you have a side angle and another side. Now I don't use letters as is kind of a representative to get into this. I just go by the the numbers and the letter in the in the triangle b squared equals 15 squared plus 25 squared. Once I've got that down it's just two times these two numbers 15 and 25 times the cosine of the angle across from little b which is 76. Now if you're using a scientific calculator you can do all of this in one step on your calculator. Uh, it does order of operations so you will be subtracting all of this um, giving you this answer and then all you have to do is take the square root of that to give you side B. Now when I went to school many many years ago we didn't have calculators and this was a uh, quite an operation It probably took me 10 or 15 minutes to to do all of this look up the cosine of 76 and work this out. Uh, you're lucky if you've got a scientific calculator because you can do all that in about 15 or 20 seconds and that'll give you the length of B. Now just to show you the flexibility of this formula, here's a situation where we've got a right angle triangle and of course it's the x squared equals 16 squared plus 20 squared and that gives us 25.6. Now you see if you make that angle larger, make it 120 degrees, obviously the hypotenuse now becomes a longer side and you're probably wondering why a subtraction here would give you a larger number. Well it's because when you're taking the cosine of an angle larger than 90, between 90 and 180, you get a negative value here which actually adds to the 16 squared plus 20 squared. And you see we get 976 as opposed to 656 back there. And you get a longer side. So this formula is, is very flexible. It'll work for uh, acute angles. It'll even work if, if you had the 90 degrees, if you put the 90 in there, the cos of 90 is zero and it'll still work. So it works for every size of angle. Now the harder of the two cases is the side-side-side situation. Um, you can start with any side. Uh, I I tend to solve for the angle across from the larger side simply because I want to know if this is uh, less than or greater than 90. So I generally start with 22 squared equals 15 squared plus 18 squared minus the 2 times 15, 18 cos t. Now you see your unknown is over here so you can't go straight across there on your calculator this time. What I generally do is I square the 22 I square the 15 and the 18, add them together, that gives me 549, and I work out the coefficient of the cos t. Now I like to have a, a positive in front of my variable, so I usually bring this over to the left side, and I'll bring the 484 over to the right side. If I subtract and get a negative, that's an indication that this angle at t is greater than 90 degrees. Since I got a positive number here, I know that it'll be less than 90. I'll divide by 540, and then I need my inverse button on my calculator, the cos inverse. You can convert that to a decimal first if you wish. I usually put it in just with the, with the fraction, and that gives me the angle at t. So just remember, the cosine law is useful when you're given either two sides and the angle between them, 
or this case where you have three sides given. Once you have the information from this, you can always go to the sign law if you need any more information about the triangle.